Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 on our video lecture involving sections 9.1 and 9.3 dealing with differential equations and their applications. In the previous video, we learned a technique used to solve differential equations. That technique was known as the method of separation of variables and we used it to solve application problems where the rate of change of a function was proportional to the function value itself. Now we saw those type of problems resulted in a problems involving continuous growth and in this video we'll begin with a problem involving continuous decay. I will point out that this problem is a little different than the one that we tried before since there is no mention of rates of change. However, if your problem mentions exponential growth or decay, then you know that you're going to be dealing with a problem where its rate of change is proportional to the function value. Alright, so this problem begins right from the get-go by telling us that radioactive elements decay exponentially. So again, what this means here is that whatever amount that we had, and I'll keep on using p, this is telling us that dp dt is equal to k times p. Okay, so now let's take a look at the problem. We have here that the number of years required for half of the atoms in a sample of radioactive material to decay is called the half-life of the element. Now a particular plutonium asymptote has a half-life of 24,100 years, and suppose that 10 grams of this isotope is released in a nuclear accident, how long will it take for that 10 grams to decay to 1 gram? Now at this point guys, the calculus is just pretty much realizing that we're dealing with this type of differential equation. The rest, as I mentioned in the previous example, is very similar to an algebra problem. where We know that the solution for this differential equation is going to have the form p of t is equals to p naught times e to the kt. Now for this problem I'm going to go ahead and change the variables since I'm not dealing with populations. So I'm going to be using the letter A instead. And the letter A, I'm using it to represent the amount. So the amount, uh, some time t, is equals to the A naught, the starting amount, times e to the kt. Okay, now I'm not going to be f solving this problem completely because I imagine it's one that you guys have seen before, but I just want to make it clear that whenever we're talking about the half-life, we're talking about the amount of times that it takes the initial amount to be cut down in half. So let me write this one here. So there we go, the half-life is the time it takes a naught, the starting amount, or whatever amount you have, to become one half of that amount. Now algebraically, you can represent it like this. A of, and just to be more precise here, I'll let the half-life to be represented by th. Alright, so mathematically, we have here that the a, the amount at th, at the half-life, is equals to one half a naught. Okay, so this is part of the equation that we're going to be working with. Well, you know what, let's actually do the setup. Alright, so for this one, for this problem, we're being told that a particular plutonium asymptote has a half-life of 24,100 years. Alright, so what that means is that if I were to evaluate the function, a at the year 24,100, then I would be getting here the function a naught times e to the kt, but now the time is the 24,100, and this should be equals to one half the starting amount. Now you get to see here that when working with this differential equation, it really doesn't matter what is your starting amount. And you notice that this problem does mention it here, but well, you don't really need the starting amount since you can just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by whatever the starting amount was and the problem simply reduces to this differential equation, sorry, this exponential equation e to the k times the half-life is equals to one-half. So with this information, you can actually figure out, okay, what is the k value? Now the k value for this one, I'm going to go ahead and take the ln of both sides and well let's do it here taking the ln we're going to have the ln of e to the 24,100 is equals to the ln of one half. Now for this one here guys the ln of one half you can actually rewrite it here as the ln of one minus the ln of two using just the rules of logarithms but you know that the ln of one is the same thing as zero so the ln of one half is really the same thing as the negative ln of 2. Okay, 
Now, getting the k value by itself, we're gonna have, whoops, I actually did miss a k. I'll put it here, the k value. So the k value is gonna be equals to, well, I'll put it here, 24,100 times k is equals to the negative ln of two, which is gonna give us then that the k is equals to the negative ln of two divided by 24,100. Okay, now, you might have noticed that for this problem, we were not really dealing with continuous growth. In fact, we were told that this problem was decaying exponentially. And you might have thought that when I wrote down the formula here, I was missing the negative. Truth be told, you don't need to include the negative in your formula as soon as you start writing it, because you know that the exponential will have a negative exponent. And you see here that if you're doing everything properly, when you find the k value, the k value will have a negative. And again, the exponent should be negative because it's decay. But doing the math, the negative is gonna come out, it's gonna come out on its own. Now the k value here, um, I'm gonna get, put this one into the calculator, and I get approximately a negative 2.876 times 10 to the negative five. I'm not gonna go ahead and write this one here. I'm gonna keep the k value as the negative ln of two over 24,100. But you see here that yes, this one here is indeed negative. Now really, once you figure out the k value, then you know what your exponential equation is looking like. Your exponential equation, now this one, I am gonna be using the p naught that was specified. So your differential, I'm sorry, <laughs> your exponential equation is gonna be looking like a of t is equals to 10, your starting amount, times e raised to negative ln of two all over 24,100 times t. So with this equation, now what you wanna do is figure out how long will it take for the gram to decay, for the 10 grams to decay to one gram. So we will need to set this equation equals to one and then solve for t. But this one here is just a simple or relatively simple exponential equation. So I'll let you guys finish it because I do want to move on to the next type of problems. All right, so now let's take a look at another application of differential equations, and this one here is one that you may not have seen before. This new application is Newton's Law of Cooling. Now, Newton's Law of Cooling is a physical law that describes how the temperature of an object changes over time when it is in contact with a surrounding medium that has a different temperature. So let's take a look at what the formula says. This one here tells us, you, well, tells us that the rate of change in the temperature of an object aka dt, the temperature with respect to time, is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of the surrounding medium. So tra translating this one here into a differential equation, we have here the rate of change of the temperature with respect to time is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of the medium. So in this case, the object's temperature, I'll put this one here in plum, the, ob the object's temperature here is a T, the temperature of the medium, I'll put this one here in light blue, so the temperature of the medium is given here by Tm. So there we go, this is our differential equation. Now does this make sense? Well think about it, if you have an object that is really hot and you place it at room temperature, let's say you take something out of the oven and just kind of place it there on the counter, well then you will see here that the object will begin to cool down and the hotter it is, it's gonna be cooling faster towards room temperature. So that rate of change is gonna be faster since, again, the difference in the temperatures for the object and room temperature, in this case, it's different. But as the object is cooling down towards room temperature, if it's closer to room temperature, it's actually gonna be cooling down a little bit slower. Now, so what is the information that we know? Well, we know that the cup of coffee starts off with a temperature of 100 degrees and it's being placed in an area with room temperature of 60 degrees. So there we go, we have the temperature of the medium. Now we know that the, cool, the coffee cools down from 100 to 90 in five minutes, so it's gonna be important. And we wanna know how long will it take for the temperature to decrease to 80 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin by writing out our differential equation. So we know that the rate of change for the temperature is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and the medium. There we go. Now we know that the temperature of the medium 
was 60 degrees. So let's solve our differential equation then. And I'll do it here. So we're going to have the, the T dt, or the capital T dt, is equals to k times capital T minus 60. So solving here our differential equation in, with the method of separation of variables. I'm going to rewrite this one as dt over t minus 60 is equals to k times dt. All right, so now I have the t's together. And we can go ahead and integrate, which should give us here the ln of the absolute value of t minus 60 is equals to kt plus c. Now exponentiating both sides, just as we were doing with the other type of problems. And using the shortcut that I mentioned, we're going to have t minus 60 is equals to e to the kt. I'll call this one here c1. And since I have e to the c1, which is another constant, I'll put this one here as a big constant c. And getting the t by itself, we get here that the temperature as a function of time is equals to c times e to the kt plus 60. And there we go. This is our solution for the temperature function. Now we can go ahead and make use of, well, the information that the problem gives us. Now we know that when the coffee was, I guess, right out of the coffee machine or <laughs> coffee maker, it started off with a temperature of 100 degrees. So at T0, the temperature was equals to 100. So T0 is equals to 100. So we're going to get here C times E to the 0 plus 60 was equals to 100. So this is going to give us then that 60 or C plus 60 is equals to 100, which tells us then that our C value is equals to 40. OK, so now we know our C value. But what about the K value? We still don't know what it is. So let's go ahead and figure it out. So before we do though, let's just write down what we have. We know that the temperature function as a function of time is equals to 40 times e to the k t plus 60. And we also have to know that when the coffee has been out for five minutes at room temperature, so when t is equals to five, we know that the temperature was equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that to figure out what is going to be our k value. So let's see, we're going to have then that t of 5 is equals to 40 times e to the k times 5 plus 60 is equals to 30, which taken with 60 is going to give us a 30. So we have 40 times e to the 5k is equals to 30 divided by 40. We're going to get the differential equation e to the 5k is equals to well, 3 over 4 is 0.75. Taking the ln of both sides, we're going to get, I'll put here ln. Well, I'll do it here on the side. So that's going to give us here a 5k is equals to the ln of 0.75, which is going to give us our k value of ln of 0.75 divided by 5. Now, at this point, we have finished our temperature function. Our temperature function is equals to 40 times e to the, well, whatever our k value was here, k value times time plus 60, where again, the k value was the ln of 0.75 divided by 5. Alrighty. Now, let's go ahead and finish the problem, because we still want to figure out how much longer, and this is key here, actually. I'm going to point it out later, but Notice how this problem is telling us that after five minutes, your temperature went from 100 to 90 degrees, but we want to know how much longer it's going to take for the temperature to decrease to 80 degrees. So we need to figure out how long it's going to take the temperature to go to 80 degrees. So for this one here, how long will this one actually, let me make everything smaller, guys. There we go. So what is the time? that it's going to take for their temperature here to go all the way to 80. 
Now at this point guys, I'm just gonna do it a little bit quickly. I'm gonna skip a couple of steps and I'm gonna get here. My T value is going to be approximately 12.047 minutes. Okay, now, again, careful here with the wording. It's, if you were to take the coffee out, pour it, it's gonna take about 12 minutes to reach 80 degrees. However, well, we're starting the problem basically after five minutes already. So five minutes have passed already for the, for the coffee to go from 100 to 90. So how much more time is missing from, to go from 90 to 80? Well, we need to take away essentially the five minutes that have passed. And that's gonna tell us then that the time here, so T is going to be approximately 7.047 minutes longer. Okay, and that'd be all. Now, before we go on to the next problem here, I wanna ask you guys a question for this one. So according to the differential equation that we're getting, will our cup of coffee here ever reach room temperature? So basically what I'm asking is, if we have the differential equation, 40 times e to the kt plus 60, will that ever be equals to 60? Well, you might be wondering, well, I'm not so sure because, well, even though the coffee is cooling down, yes, the only way for you to get 60 is if this whole term is zero. But this whole term would be zero if you were to take the limit as t goes to infinity for the e to the kt. And again, it's, remember the k value, technically it's a negative value. If you plug it into your calculator, I guess I'll put it here. Our k value was approximately a negative 0 0.0575. So you see, okay, that k value was negative, so the only way for you to get a zero is if this, if the e to the kt was going all the way to infinity, but we know that's not gonna happen the problem. And this is where the mathematical modeling, again, it falls through a little bit because, well, it doesn't make physical sense that the time for an object to reach room temperature is an infinite amount of time. And again, that's not really true. But for all intents and purposes, though, if you take a look at the graph, which I'm going to show you right now, you'll see that, okay, well, yeah, you don't have to wait an infinite amount of time for the cup to, re to reach room temperature. You've seen it in real life. It probably will take about half an hour or so, maybe even less actually. Let's take a look. All right, so here we have our solution function where we had 40 times e to the k times well, t plus 60, where I defined the k value here. And yes, we had the exponential function that was decaying. And you get to see here that as time goes on, you do have an asymptotic behavior, which is what we expected. The asymptotic behavior was, well, that the temperature was gonna be getting arbitrarily close to room temperature. And again, it's not like we need to let the time go all the way to infinity. We get to see here that on the graph, approximately after 70, 80 minutes, you're pretty much reaching the room temperature of 60. And we get to see here with the table as well. So when the time is 60, so at one hour, the temperature would have been 61 degrees at 65 minutes, an hour and five minutes. Now you're at the 60. After 100, minute, 100 minutes, yeah, you're pretty much at the 60, the 60 degrees. So it's gonna take about a little bit over an hour and a half for the coffee to reach room temperature. Okay, now this is where we are going to be stopping part two. We're gonna take a look at one more example of an application for differential equations in part three. So I'll see you there.